Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts, and in today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these beautiful etched wine glasses. All you need is a few things. Wine glasses, armor etch, vinyl stencil, transfer tape, and a foam brush. Now let's get started. I love creating anything handmade and especially creating personalized gifts. So today I'll be sharing with you how you can customize long stemmed wine glasses using armor etch in two different ways. I found these images on Google and cleaned them up here in Design Space. You can use any kind of wording, shapes, animals, anything, the possibilities are endless. I chose to use these hummingbirds and fireflies since I have tons of these all over the place out here in the country. So the first thing you want to do is just find something on Google or purchase something on Etsy. I just found these for free and just cleaned it up in Design Space myself. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just take your design and figure out how large you're going to want them. So for my particular wine glasses, I'm going to make different sizes of each. So I'm going to do a cup that has, or a wine glass that has just dragonflies on it. So I have these three dragonflies here. I think the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit larger for the first one and then kind of go in separate with these littler ones here and just kind of make them smaller in size and place them all over the wine glass uh, all around uh, every side. And then maybe come in and use a few of these ones too to fill in this uh, smaller spot. So that's the first thing you need to figure out is what you wanna do and what size you want them. So I kind of have a rough estimate of how big I want my stuff. Instead, normally I would just select them all and attach it, but this time I'm going to be using and cut the, cutting them out in, in individual pieces and putting them onto my cup for the first one. So I'm just gonna kind of play around and figure out what kind of size I want and then just work with the next one. But again, with these is, it's kind of fun. You just cut out whatever you think you might need and then you can always cut out more if you need more. But I'm trying to think of how many I'm going to need for the whole cup. So I'm just going to take this. I'm actually going to select all three of these and then hit the duplicate button up here. And then that's just going to give me three of the same ones I just had. Now I can work with these ones and make them a little bit smaller. I think actually this one I'm going to leave the same so I'll have one on each side of the cup and then these guys I'll just make a little bit smaller and I don't have to rotate these because when you take it off your mat it'll be rotated anyways you can put it any way that you want it but I think what I'm going to do is actually make a couple more of these so with the selected I'm just going to hit duplicate and I'm going to move this over really quick, kind of get a feel for what it's going to look like. So I'm imagining this is the front of my cup. So kind of placing them where I want them and just kind of turn it. Like I said, you don't have to turn it on. I'm just kind of turning to see what it would look like. I think I'll make another one of this. So just again, hit the duplicate button. And kind of go from there. I mean, I think I'll make a few more of these just because... I want to have different placements of these. So the fun part of it is just cutting it out, weeding them, and then seeing where you want to put it on your cup. So I'm just going to do the same for these, just kind of make a few. I don't like it when they're exactly the same. I mean, you can do it however you want to do it, but I think that's the fun part of homemade is you can do it any way that you want. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, whatever. So for now, these two uh, sections are done. I'm done with the dragonflies. You can always come back and make more if you need more, but I'm going to leave this for now. This is going to be the front of my glass, and then this will be the back of my glass. So now I want to work with the hummingbird. So I found this one. I thought it was really cute. My daughter thinks that this one looks more like a Hawaiian uh, flower, but I liked how it looked. This one is really detailed, so I noticed that if you make it smaller, it'll be really hard to cut out, or it'll be really hard to weed out, I should say. So I'm not going to use that one. And then I found these two separate, but I'm actually going to put them together and work with it as one. And I think on one of the cups, I'm just going to make just this. But I need to make it a little bit bigger so that it will just fit on the front of my cup. You can take your mat and you can stretch it around your cup if that helps you to kind of get a visual on how big you want it but I think I'm just gonna leave this the way that it is. And I'm just gonna duplicate it so I can have at least two of the same um, 
same cups. I do sell a lot of my items at a store locally. So I think when I sell it, I'll sell them two at a time. So these are already uh, detached from each other. So it will cut out just as it looks. It'll be away from each other, which I'm okay with because when you're using this and you're putting a vinyl onto a cup, it's rather hard getting around the curved surface of it. So I'm gonna just leave them uh, detached from each other. And this one I think I'll work on another time. So instead of me deleting these two and getting rid of them, I'm just going to actually change the color. So I'm just going to grab this one because there's only one and then change it to a purple color. And then I'll grab that one and change it to the same thing. And um, these ones, it doesn't matter what color they are because it's whatever color you choose to use. You can use um, vinyl from the dollar store, which doesn't really work for me that well. I, I don't have a problem of using my vinyl to put it on the cups. It sticks better and I know I have more of a chance of it not seeping through anything. So I'm gonna cut this out as it looks. I'll show you really quick. I'm gonna click the make it button and then it's gonna bring the colors up here. So here's the first one. So one thing I really want to uh, tell you about, or I can't express enough, is when you're cutting out anything to use for um, etching, I like to give myself a little border around each side. So let's say I cut this out and I have just the flower here. You're gonna have a heck of a time using a paintbrush and just getting all these little tiny pieces. So I always put a little bit of a space in between that I, when it cuts out, I can cut out a little extra piece on each side. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna leave this one. I'm not even gonna worry about cutting this one out. I'm just gonna work with the black one. So I will cut these pieces out and I will show you the next step. Okay, so I was able to cut out these and I started weeding them. You can see them here. Um, these ones, I did the reverse weed, which I'm pulling out the uh, image itself and then these ones I'm pulling back just the regular vinyl but one thing with these is the first flower that I did it did not cut out right um, it was so hard to weed and it was not coming up properly so I went back in Google and I found this rose and I cleaned it up and I put it in design space so I did have to switch that and then also Unfortunately, my dragonfly did not work either. The little tiny holes on here were connected, so I just had to peel the whole thing off, which is okay. So I have three different uh, fireflies here. I have this one and then this little guy. So, um, yeah, so unfortunately, but you know, everything works out for uh, the way it should. Okay, so I have these all weeded out. Um, the last one I have to do is this other hummingbird. Um, but one thing I did want to show you really quick, I do mention it on every video because I absolutely love it and I love giving people tips and tricks, but this light up table that I have is amazing. I love this thing. I got it from Amazon. I'm not sure if they sell the Cricut brand anymore, but any kind of light up are amazing. I love them. I'll show you really quick. See, it's dark here. It'd be really hard to see these colors through it. Even if you're using white, it's still hard to weed through. So I finished doing these. Even with these little tiny pieces here, I was able to see those in um, on my night on the light here. So I have everything weeded out. So the next thing I need to do is take my cup, and I will show you one that's done already. So I did this one. It looks like a mess, right? Um, I put all my vinyl on here and I pushed really hard and I got all the little air bubbles out. But here is one that I did not do yet, which I will have to do next. Um, but the first thing you want to do before you etch or put any vinyl on is just take some alcohol and take some paper towel and clean your glass really well. You do not want to have any marks or little smudges or anything on here. You want to have it completely clean. So I'm going to take my glass, I'm going to clean it, and then I'm just going to take my uh, stickers and put them all over here, just like I did this one for the first one. And then the second one is going to be a little different. The reverse weed one uh, is uh, like this, where I took the image out. And then the other one is going to be, I'm just going to put these on here and actually do the opposite with this one and fill in everything with the armor edge, leaving just the uh, stencil itself. So when I peel it up, everything will be etched except for the image itself. So I wanted to show you two different ways on how to do this. But like I said, I did this one already. So the next thing I need to do is clean this one and then just put my stencils where I want it. 
Um, but before I go ahead and etch it, another thing you need to do is uh, put some tape around the inside of your cup and then also at the bottom here if you don't want it to be etched, which I do not. So I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on the inside and then put some tape down here and then I will put my stencils on and then I'll, I will show you what that looks like and then the process of putting the armor etch on. All right, so I just want to show you this really quick. I did this one. I did the rose and the hummingbird. Um, I think it turned out really cute. So I'm just going to show you really quick. I did clean my uh, cups with some alcohol and this paper towel. Uh, you want to make sure it's dry before you go any further and use it. So I'm just going to show you quick. So I have the rose here, and I have my transfer tape over it, and I'm just going to pull it up. And then you just place it anywhere that you want it to go. I think my first one I placed a little bit too far down. So this one I'm just going to put up a little bit further. And you got to remember this is a curved surface. So it's going to be a little bit harder to work your vinyl on. But since this is a reverse weed, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to be able to just pick it up and move it if I need to. So I'm just using my fingers and pushing as I'm pulling the transfer tape so I don't get any bubbles in there. And then once you get it on really well, you just carefully pull back the transfer tape, leaving your vinyl behind. If it comes up with it, just use your fingers and pull it back down. But the main part I wanted to show you with this is once it's down, you just want to use your fingers and make sure that your vinyl is down really well because you don't want anything going underneath that vinyl when you're putting your etching cream on. So this one turned out really well. So the next part I'm going to do is just use the hummingbird. I'm going to use the same piece of transfer tape. I'm just going to use my scraper, get it on really well, pull it off, and then just put him close to it. And this one's a little bit easier because he's a little bit of has a little bit of curve in it and then peel back once you think you have it down and then one thing I like to do before I go ahead and put the etching cream on is now that my finger marks are all over it I'm just gonna go lightly over this kind of clean it again with the alcohol and then I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna take some tape I have electrical tape I love using electrical tape um, in, in a previous video I was showing you how to make uh, glasses, uh, glitter glasses. Um, so I used electrical tape and it does really awesome. It does a really good job holding and sealing things, but you don't want to get your uh, armor etch on the inside of where you drink. It's not going to hurt on your mouth part. That's why I love using armor etch instead of the vinyl. You can put it in the dishwasher. It will never come off. It won't harm you once it's already etched in because all it's doing is etching into your glass. So it will not harm you at all. It's not dangerous or anything. So these two are finished. I'm just going to use the tape, go around the top here, and then also at the bottom. And then I'm just going to finish my other one to look like this. Um, so this is one way to do it, where you just fill in the spots where you want your armor etch to go. And then this one, it's going to be everywhere is going to have armor etch. And the only thing you're going to see that's not frosted out is your design. So I'm excited to do this. I've never done it this way before, so it's going to be kind of fun to see right, how it guys, here is the fun part. I have my armor etch that I purchased off of, actually I bought it from Hobby Lobby for $22.99 with a 40% off coupon, but I just found out that this is actually cheaper on Amazon. I will leave the link below in case you're interested. I just have it on a plate. I have my cups all done. I just put my dragonflies all over these cups. And then I have my other one. I have the tape around the inside of the top part and then also at the bottom so I don't get it because this one is going to be going all over the glass. So let's get started. First thing it says to put gloves on. I will be honest with you, I never use gloves for this. I'm using <laughs> a half of a foam brush. My daughter used my last one, so I had to cut off the top. So unfortunately, I only have a little bit to left to use of this one. But I'm just going to dip it in here and carefully just go over the spot that's open on the vinyl here, making sure you don't miss any spots because you won't have it etched there. But this is why I like to put a little bit of an extra space around each side 
so that when you're etching this, you don't have to be careful, you don't have to be too careful with getting it on the edges. So that's why I give it a little bit of extra space on each side. But then this is all you do. Really carefully put it on here. And wherever you put your armor etch, it is going to go. Even if you accidentally do it for a second and you wipe it off, unfortunately, it's still going to show through. And you also have to watch out for, like, running if you put too much on. I like to put a lot on. I like to really dab it on here. Um, but if you do, you have to make sure that it's not running and going off of your cup or, or off of your vinyl. Which, unfortunately, has happened to me a few times. But I like to put a lot on because I don't really waste this because after I'm done, after the 10 minutes is up, I like to take it off with my foam brush and put it back into the container. Whoops, so here I see I'm over. So I'm just gonna move my vinyl up a little bit. Just get this last little guy here. And then I just look over everything carefully to make sure I'm not missing anywhere. Or anywhere that I can put it on any thicker but I do like to put this on thick so there's the first one and then I'm going to show you this next one of doing it all over so I did go ahead and clean this again so I'm not going to smudge it up but I did push down the vinyl really hard um, to make sure there's no spots uh, that are pulling up or any bubbles or anything so this one's a little bit different I've never done it this way before but kind of excited so I'm just going to take my armor etch and go over the whole thing making sure I get all at the top. Again, it's harder with this foam brush because unfortunately she used my last one. She likes to paint, so she used it. But again, I just go over it pretty thick because afterwards when time's up, before I rinse it off, I will um, rub it off. So I'm gonna go on pretty thick with this. And this is why I like taping the inside of it so you don't go on the inside of it. But I'm going on pretty thick and then I'm just going to go over it when I'm done in a straight line to make sure it's all nice and even. I think it was a good idea that I put the tape in here because then you won't get any on the inside of it. So now I'm just going over it again. I'm just going to kind of pull as I go, making sure I got every little spot on here. You can kind of tell where you have it and where you don't. Again, I like to go nice and thick on this. So I will just finish this with the other two. And then after the 10 minutes is up, I will go back on here and I will take all this extra off and I'll just put it back in my bottle for next time. I like to reuse everything that I can. So instead of putting this down the sink, I'll just take it all off and put whatever I can back in the container. But I will show you what this looks like after the 10 minutes is up. But again, please make sure that you get everywhere and double check before you put it down. And then really go over your designs. But I'll finish this up. I'll show you what it looks like after it's done and after I take off the extra. And then I'll show you how to wash it off. But again, it is highly recommended to use gloves, but I've been very careful not to get any on my fingers or my clothes. So there's this one, it is all done. The inside, this is why I like the tape there because nothing is going on the inside of it. But I'm just gonna let this sit. You can also do the bottom if you wanted. I suppose you could tape it off here again and kind of put it down there where you have like a little line here. Or you could just not even do the tape at all and just do the whole stem. But I just chose just to do the top part, so that's how that's gonna be. So I'm gonna finish up with these other ones that I have really quick and then I'll show you what it looks like after. Right, so now I'm finished with this. I'm at my sink. I let these sit for 15 minutes. There's this one here. Again, it's recommended to wear gloves, but I just don't. So I'm just gonna take it under some warm water and then just rub it off. Here it is, it's all finished. When it dries, it'll definitely show up a lot better, but you can see the little hummingbird there and there's the rose. So once it dries, it will definitely show up a lot better, but I'm going to finish these. I just wipe off all the excess before I take off the vinyl, so that's what I'm just doing. It's just taking warm water and just rubbing it off before I take the vinyl off. So here's the next one. These are the butterflies or the dragonflies. 
As you can see, it doesn't show up very well, but once it dries, it'll really come through. So I'll just finish these up and then I'll show you what they look like after they dried. Oh my gosh, guys, I really love how these turned out. I even made a few extra ones that say toasted, buzzed, lit, and hammered. I purchased these SVG files from Etsy. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and I hope you create your own personalized wine glasses. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give me a big thumbs up and leave a comment below. I love reading comments from all of you. Happy crafting everyone!